Hi, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to read Rabindranath Tagore's Gitanjali number 50. I had gone a begging. It's a beautiful interview. As soon as Gitanjali or its English title Song Suffering was published in English, uh, it created an, a new opening, a new opening to the plethora of beautiful verses that at once tells the nature, the beauty and obviously humanity and in above all with the amalgated spirit such of God. So today we are going to read this particular poem number 50 I had gone a begging and that poem adds to our mind with a single concept that is charity in fact Indian philosophy or Indian culture has its three principles data damayanta and dadham that first word data that's been charity to others and who can exercise the charity is the greatest philosophical explanation here. A charity is not that I had plenty and I gave it to you. The charity means the willingness of your heart to give it to your all. Give it your all to your fellow person to the needy and that concept of charity in simple meaning is a very pivotal idea of our Indianness. So here Gita Twans creates a simplistic view of our Indianness, of our Indian philosophy as well as Tagore's unique style of stating the fact what the charity is. Let's concentrate on the poem. I had gone a begging from door to door in the village forth when thy golden chariot appeared in the distance like a gorgeous dream and I wondered who was this king of all kings. The beggar that we find in this poem, he has gone to begging from door to door through the village path. Who is this beggar? He is the common man, every man. Here it might be the poet himself. The beggar referred to in this poem is the poet. If not poet, every man. If not every man, then a beggar is an entity of our heart. We go to our emotional corners to beg something each and every moment that is desires. In simplistic term, the beggar, a man of place and blood, is the very person, the poet himself. If I say, the beggar is a saint like that of a fakir, he has gone for arms from door to door. One day he was begging from door to door in the village path, the rural lanes of the Indian villages. Then something unusual happened. What is that unusual thing? A golden chariot appeared in the distance like a gorgeous dream. That unusual thing is just happening at a distance. A golden chariot where everything is bright. Affusions. The brightness with its full color, rudient faces. The chariot is no 
chariot of simple man it's the chariot of someone some great person who is that great person who is that person who will give me everything even if i want or not if such thing The chariot is itself a gorgeous dream, a dream of pomp, dream of splendor, and instantly that dream adds the mind of the beggar, of the beggar poet. He was just thinking who that person would be. Who is that person who is just nearing me? It's like a gorgeous dream. He has never dreamed of such a sight in front of him. The poet thought in wonder who this king of kings, the king of kings is none but the God himself. And that God is that supreme lord father moner manus the lord of life for the poet tegor and as he sees the god as he sees the god he says my hopes rose high and methought my evil days were at an end and i stood waiting for arms to be given unasked for wealth scattered on all sides in the dust. Seeing the golden chariot, the poet become hopeful and his hope rises as like that of a rising of the thermometer scale. He thought that the king of all kings would give him unlimited wealth and the alms he will get will be unasked for and the days of his misery would come to an end he would stood waiting with eager expectation what comes next for the chariot to come near him and the precious alms will be scattered in dust and he will be gathering all of them and his old bad days will be an end he will be rich enough not to beg arms further. The chariot stopped where I stood. Thy glance fell on me and thou comes down with a smile. I felt that the luck of my life had come at last. Then of a sudden thou didn't then of a sudden thou didst hold out thy right hand and say, What hast thou to give to me? Indeed the chariot came and stopped before the poet. And he was waiting for that king of the kings to come and give him arms plenty unwanted for. The king's glance fell on him. The Lord and the beggar, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of life and the poet, the creator is now face to face. But what happens next is quite curious. The king of the king just came down from his chariot with a smile. The point of field that the luck of his life has come to an end, his bad old days are gone by and he will be happier, he will not have to beg up for that. And he was eagerly hoped for the better days of his life and, and this was to happen and it would be quite the end of his black days. But surprising things were awaiting there. Very contrary thing happens there. To what? He had so long hoped for 
is disheartening one. What happens next? All on a sudden, the king of the kings just reached his right hand in front of him and begged alms for him. And the beggar poet was not ready at all for this catastrophe. He was what expecting happened the very exact opposite. That's very unusual behavior, unexpected behavior. He was expecting wealth from the king, but instead of that fulfillment of his eager or hoped treasures, what he get, the king become the beggar and he becomes a giver. So the switch of the positions of their social standing. It's like an inversion of the situation. The chariot which stopped before him, the king came down and asked alms instead of giving him something. Hey, what a kingly jest was it to open the palm to a beggar to beg? I was confused and stood undecided. And then from my wallet, I slowly took one out little grain of corn and gave it to thee. It's quite a usual behavior. The beggar poet thought it's like a simple joking by the kings. If not, why the king of kings opened his palm to a beggar to beg? However, the poet was simply confused and stood undecided. After a bewildered moment of few seconds or few minutes, he comes back to his original senses. And from his confused strata of thinking, he just slowly took out from his wallet at least little one little grain of corn and give it to the king of kings. So he avoided by the rules that if one asks for alms, being a data, deliver yours, whatever you have, even if you are making your lives by alms, you have the treasure of that and you can give it easily to others. The slowly simply refers that beggar poet's reluctance to give the alms to the king is it's quite unorthodox it is quite um, is a sense of humor it also reveals uh, the beggar poet's miserliness that uh, he is not uh, he is not willing to give his alms altogether the least little grain also makes a point that uh, the poet's miserly attitude or even uh, the poet beggar is not willing to deliver it wholeheartedly to the other person. So here the confusing state of philosophical meaning is quite clear. We the being, we as a human being always in, in a state of confusion if I am a giver or a taker. We sometimes think ourselves that we must beg something, we, we must beg something from God. But instead, do you know how many wealth do you have? That little beggar didn't know how much wealth he had possessed in his wallet. But how great my surprise when at the day's end I emptied my bag on the floor to find a least little crumb of 
gold among the poor heap. I bitterly wept and wished that I had had the heart to give thee my all. When the day comes to an end, Begat Poet returned home and untied his bag on the floor to see what he had collected on the day's arm, and he was surprised, and his surprise had no bounds. There, when he found a little grain of gold among the poor heap of the arms, he now understood that king of the kings were no ordinary beggar, but he was the god himself, the lord of light, and the little piece of gold that was given to him is not the gold, but the price of charity. He also understood one spiritual understanding. It is that the embodiment that the embodiment of God's blessing on him in the spirit of uh, this transformation from the little grain to a gold piece is a message that if you wholeheartedly give you give somebody the uh, content that you possess that you earn by your labor by your toil can e even that thing can be delivered as a charity as a dana as a data being a data then that spirit will be gilded will be given back as a spirit of as a spirit of spiritual acclaim that is the blessing of God. The poet began just watching all the little grains started bitterly weeping and the king of kings he he gave only but a little grain. He was dropping tears. He realized that if he gave him all of his alms, all should have been transformed into gold. It's like that of a lost opportunity. A lost opportunity to surrender himself to that God. But don't take this line literally that the beggar poet was thinking that if he gave him all of his wealth, it might have, he have turned into gold and he might have lost an opportunity of being a, being a richer. Rather, his feeling was quite simple that if he gave the charity or if he had the ability or the power to exercise charity, dana, being a data, then he might have a blessings from God and all of his toils must have a transformation into a golden opportunity with the unification of God, the Supreme Father, the Lord of Life. A higher spiritual thinking is more welcome than a lower materialistic gain. That's why the bigger poet has cried at last. I had had the heart to give thee my all. It was not the hand that was giving, it was the heart that was the that was giving the permission of being a data. So the philosophy of charity is very much a spiritual lesson rather than a straightforward poem. By this poem we can understand a better philosophical notion of Tagore by which he has summed up the very notion of his idea of God, the Lord of Life, that is God's most preferred philosophy of life is Dana, Data, being Data. Data, Daddam, Damayanta. Dan, Doya, Dhamma. These are the three spirits that constitute a whole body. That is the Vedic education. 
and that education in a simplified view has been explained by Tagore in this poem. That's it. Keep reading my blog, keep listening my blog and comment, share, subscribe and ask me questions if you have any on this related topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.